Welcome, welcome to the Panic Button. We're reacting to trans stuff today. I'm Jesse. I'm Nina. Let's go. So apparently a transgender won the USA Today Woman of the Year, which means that a man was Woman of the Year. I guess we as men really are that good at everything, huh? We're so good at life that we're even winning women's awards. We are winning women's sports. We're winning everything. We are apparently even better than women at being women. Men stay winning. Hey, it's true. So that guy was in a Jubilee video, I believe, or the cut, Jubilee or the cut, that male feminist against not male feminists. I do think that men make better women than women do. And I say this because, well, everyone seems to think that. I mean, who better to have a vagina than someone with a penis? When it comes down to it, I guess men do women face better than women do. You know what's sad is exactly what I wrote down is, you know he's right. I it's know like he's It's right. like, if you're going by today's society's standards, men are officially better than women at being women. I would say that the biggest misogynists out of all, are the feminists. They are so gaslit into believing that uh, they're against the patriarchy, they have no idea that they're for it. I had a quick thought on this one. Yeah. Remember the days when you were like, she had plastic surgery? Yeah. And now it's like, they got this whole thing done to themselves. Do you know what I mean? Go queen, strong and brave. I would say that any man who says that a trans woman is a woman should date them because they are having a really hard time finding people to date them. And I believe that the men who say the trans women are women should be the ones specifically to date them. So men, if you think trans women are women, date them. Yeah. This is Riley Gaines. You know uh, Riley? Yeah, she was a teammate of Leah Thomas. Yeah, she got punched in the head by a, twice by, a, by men so that sad. said they're women. Strong and brave. Um, but we go back there and the official looks at me and Leah. We're about this far apart. And he says, great job. You guys tied. Uh, Leah gets the trophy. And so I look at him and I say, okay, I understand we tied. And I understand there's one trophy. But what's your, what's your thought process as to why Leah gets the trophy? And he said, well, for photo purposes, Leah has to have the trophy. So you can pose with this one, but you go home empty-handed. Leah takes the trophy. Of course, I knew what was happening was wrong or the disadvantage that we were at. And I knew what was happening in regards to the locker room being forced to undress in front of a fully intact biological male. I knew that was wrong. But when the NCAA reduced everything that I had dedicated my entire life to, I've been swimming since I was four years old, everything that I have dedicated my entire life to, I was reduced to a photo op to validate the identity of a male. And that's when I decided to take a public stance. That is so sad, isn't it? Could you imagine doing something you're passionate about, doing the exact same as someone else, and being told you weren't good enough because you don't look good on camera? What they should have said is, sorry, Riley, you don't have nuts. You don't deserve to be here. You're not trendy enough. You're not trendy enough. You That's don't look the part. You're too feminine. Hey, the patriarchy is alive and well. It's in the eyes of every feminist, non-binary, and trans person. Sorry, good trans people. I know you're out there, lesbians and gays. You better get on your platforms and start bitching. Here's the thing with looking the part. I understand there's a part to fill. And, like, you have Broadway, right? Where you can do whatever you want, cast them however you want, do that, right? Pretty much, yeah. But you end up in these traps like Disney's going into, mm -hmm. which is just constantly remaking to fit different trendy categories. Trans, gay, Hispanic, black, it doesn't matter. They're taking it on, right? Yes. I'm so tired of people trying to look trendy. Just be your fucking self. No, shit... that doesn't make you money. That doesn't make you popular. Being yourself is meaningless. You have to act like everyone else and agree with everything they say. God damn it! And bull fucking should I say because I stand with... Hey, check out this high school race. Look at the cute little girls running. Look at the dude. Big galloping like a damn stallion. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he turned around. Come on, hurry up, get you. Hurry up, I'll slow down for you. <laughs> he turned... Look, he slowed down for him. This is very easy. If you want to tell the difference between a male runner and a female runner, there's a big difference, and it's called nuts. If you got nuts, you're gonna run a little bit different than the women, okay, sir? Unless you completely 
eunuch yourself and remove the wiener and the and the, and the nuts, the beans and the franks. And maybe you might run like a woman, but how many it's pretty obvious to tell who's got the nuts and who doesn't have the nuts. How many double takes were given in that video? The biological women <laughs> never looked back because they're looking, this is the goal I want to get to as fast as I can. Let's if go. I were these women, I would tell them, once the race starts, don't run. Uh, it's a boycott, basically. But women, <laughs> you're too weak! You will be the first ones to fall. You are living under the patriarchy. You are making the patriarchy bigger, rising them up to the top, and you have no idea because you're intersectionally hypnotized that you have no fucking idea what's going on. You just are gaslit by men who say that they're women. And because you're so inclusive and you feel so bad for them, you're letting them take over everything. Thanks, bitches. Unfortunately, I don't believe it's a, a weakness. I think that women truly believe that, like, this is their opportunity, right? Opportunity for what? If you're swimming at any uh, collegiate level, then you're getting money for it, right? Let's say that you get a swimming scholarship, and you're put in this situation, and all you've ever done your whole life is swim. And now you're told... You have to work with this person because it's just the way the world is now. Politically, mm. you have to. I don't think it's a matter of them just, like, caving to society's standards. I think it's more or less, like, this is the one thing I wanted my whole life. And so if I have to dismiss this thing that kind of bothers me, maybe I'll get my dream. You know what I mean? And so these women are redundantly fighting because they think they're going to get their dream. But if you're not trending, if you don't have nuts, you're not going to win. So you're telling me that these women don't live in reality? Yes. I'm not saying they live in reality. Okay, cool. Well, guys, you know what they say? You go woke, you go broke. Case in point. Budweiser. They went from this... And this, aw, I remember Spuds. Amazing. And now, here's their new spokesman. Yep. Quite literally. Budweiser hired a new spokesman, and his name is Dylan Mulvaney. If you think of it this way, think of it this way, okay? Most men drink Budweiser, right? Maybe some lesbians do too. Now we have this dude who is gay, right? He's a gay dude, he's pretending to be a woman, he's got woman face, he's much like Al Jolson doing blackface, and now he's on Budweiser. If you had your dude friends, right? Y'all are hanging out and shit, and your, your dude friend opens up a Bud Light. The first thing, and they ain't gonna say this online, but the first thing those dudes are gonna say is, why the fuck are you drinking that fat beer? Are you going to be drinking uh, that Bud Light, sir, knowing that uh, it is for uh, men who think they're women? In my eyes, it's no. like this big flag. When you see a Bud Light can, mm -hmm. it's like this big flag saying, I like trannies. <laughs> What's the code before? I'm friends with Dorothy or something like that, which is like, I'm a gay dude, but I can't say gay because I'll get in trouble for it. So it's like, I'm friends with Dorothy. This is the same idea. So any dude who sees another dude drinking Bud Light's gonna automatically think he's gay now. Or wants to fuck a trans person. Yeah. Like, even if you don't consider that gay. Sure. And there's nothing wrong with that, but if you're a dude, no. a straight dude with a bunch of dude friends, the one dude cracks open a Bud Light, the other dudes are gonna be like... Like, you already yep. know from seeing their beer, their political alignment. Isn't that crazy? Once COVID started, Everyone had to have a political agenda. I don't know why, but it's disgusting. Shut the fuck up, sell beer, make it taste good, and that's it. The the crazy woman with the shark eyes, the VP of Bud Light, who was saying, we're just trying to be inclusive. Inclusivity. Well, if it's so inclusive, then why the fuck is no one buying your beer now, bitch? Who in the f decided, you know what? This would be a really smart idea to hire some woke crazy person who uses they, them as a pronoun. That's a great idea. How are we going to tank this? Let's tank it in a royal style. Let's hire a they them as a VP so she can just tank our whole business. Awesome. Now, see, this is the Aunt your Mama. I remember. 
they took off the box because they said it was racist. Now, when they originally launched this product with that yeah. Uncle Mama on the box, yeah. it was kind of racist. Eyes in town, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days is here. <laughs> Look at Listen, we He's all knew little, it, though. We all racist. knew it. Yeah. Uncle Ben, Aunt Jemima, you know them. You love them. They were the black spokesperson of the brand. Everyone loved Aunt Jemima. The years of these ads, you have to really take into account when people weren't offended by people like Aunt Jemima. Uh. Mark Twain wrote this way, and people admire it. The white boy, I was here, that <laughs> Cheese it. Yeah, look what they recently did to that box. Hmm, that's funny. Why are you gonna take off a black person off the box and then you're gonna put a black transgender? Well, she trans, I mean, he transgender or he, uh. No, he is in drag. One is demeaning, the other one is liberation. <laughs> Gay people, they've been oppressed. Okay? Right? They've been oppressed, and that's why they put him on the box. She's a liberator. Should have put him on, um, I think it'd been better if you put him on a, uh, I don't know if I should say this. I might get in trouble. Yeah, don't say it. I know where you're already going with it. I heard the A come in there. I know what you was going to say. Don't even put the D in there for me. <laughs> oh, shit. What? <laughs> I know what he was going to say. A-I-D-S. Yeah, I got you. A-I-D-S. One is offensive and the one is liberating. Gay people are oppressed. I'm the first one to say gay people are not oppressed. We have not been oppressed in a while. There was a certain thing that uh, we had happen, which was wonderful, where we had gay marriage being legal. Things were wonderful. And then these crazy motherfuckers came in and fucking ruined it for us. Now there's going to be a fucking backlash, and we're all going down. We're all going down because we're guilty by association. These crazy people, we need the LGBs to separate from the TQ mother bullshit. Amen. At the end of the day, when you say that, there is a huge difference between wanting to appear as something different and just wanting to be with the same gender. Yeah, there's a big difference. See, I can't change the fact that I'm gay. You can change the fact that you are non-binary. And I'll tell you one thing, once this pendulum swings the other way, what's going to happen is all those fake trans people and the fake non-binaries are going to go back to their natural state, the accepted societal Norm. appearance of how they were before. So all their activism was for nothing. Meanwhile, we're stuck with a backlash of those assholes who change faces every single day. I believe there are some people who do have uh, gender dysphoria that they cannot solve, right? Those people are the exception. The rule of today is I want attention. I'm not playing devil's advocate for like, oh, trans people deserve it. I'm playing devil's advocate for the few exceptions. However, you see it so much. Just sell me Cheez-Its. Just like the beer. Just sell me beer. I'm not looking for any political motivation. I wanted Cheez-Its. I wanted to get drunk. And you're going to forced down my throat someone I don't even know if I agree or disagree with gays and lesbians we were happy we had what we wanted we were accepted we weren't pushing our shit on anyone and then they let the crazies out of the asylum and the next thing you know everything is turned topsy-turvy upside down flip the script and it's all shit do you remember just after they legalized gay marriage the one news report where they're like oh no this company wouldn't bake a cake for a gay wedding don't Go to that company. It's a private company. If they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it. You like and subscribe for some more titillating opinions. Are you mad at companies today? Me too. Tell me about it.